Hey guys, it's Tess. This is Wonder Wealthy, and today I'm going to share with you my tips, tricks, and hacks to find cheap airline tickets without using credit cards. that my number one tip to get super cheap or almost free airline tickets, especially internationally, is through using credit card rewards points. If you wanna check out that video on how to do that, you can click up here. But today, I'm gonna to share the tips so that you don't have to use credit cards. Maybe you're just not a credit card person or you don't trust yourself with credit cards. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't be allowed to find cheap flights, so I'm gonna show you exactly how you can. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button plus the little bell so that you can be notified when I upload videos, which happens on a weekly basis, all about personal growth, travel, and money. All right, let's dive on in. I have six steps slash hacks and tips and tricks for you that you can use, and hopefully it helps you find the cheapest airline flights you can get on your next vacation faster. Number one is flexibility and having flexibility. So before you go and ask your boss for that PTO or the approval to take that holiday, check the airline prices first. Look at dates and times that are more affordable to fly. If you can fly in the middle of the week as opposed to the end of the week or on the weekend, you might be able to save some money. Time of year can be a big indicator of whether it's high season or low season. So you can find cheaper flights if it is low season for tourists and visitors, especially in a place that is highly dependent on tourism. If you can be flexible about your location and destination of where you're flying to, that will even add another bonus. I know we all have our bucket list of locations and destinations that we want to visit in our life, but with the added knowledge that you now have of finding very affordable travel, maybe you can and broaden your horizons. The world is a really big place and has a million places to go see that are well worth your time and attention. So if you can be flexible about the destination that you're traveling to as well, you can find some major cost savings in those airline tickets. Now to go even deeper on this point, whether you want to be flexible with your location or not, if that location is around an airport that is more affordable to fly into and you have some flexibility in your time and your agenda, then you can fly into a more affordable airport, whether that's in the same country or not, but then connect with a budget airline that is on that continent or within that country that will get you to your end destination even cheaper. Now this will take a little bit more time and you're gonna have to consider all of the costs involved, but you might save hundreds of dollars by just flying to Ireland and then connecting to London instead of flying straight to London, as an example. This works really well if you're flying internationally, but it could work fairly well if you're flying domestically too. Now the second tip is one you're going to want to use for actually the first tip and all the other tips, and that's to find a really good flight search engine. Now I know I've mentioned search engines like Expedia and Skyscanner, and there's many, many out there that are really great, but my personal favorite one to use is actually this kind of old school one by Google called the ITA Matrix or Matrix ITA. I'm not so sure, but I'll link it down in the description box below. I love to use this search engine because it lets you find flights within a certain distance of where you're flying into. So if you wanna do that thing where you fly into Ireland first and then go on to London, if your end destination is London, you can also look for airports within a certain mile radius of London, then you can find cheap flights. You can also do multiple legs, which most search engines allow you to do these days, but with this Google ITA matrix or whatever it's called, you can actually look for the radius within the area that you're trying to travel to and see what the most affordable option is. For instance, long ago when I was planning a month long trip to New Zealand, I knew that I wanted to fly to New Zealand and back but find the most affordable price. I ended up finding that the most affordable round trip option for me was to actually leave out of Minneapolis, St. Paul to New Zealand but then return into Des Moines, 
Iowa. Really random, I know, but because I live in the middle of those two locations, it made total sense for me to fly out of one and fly into the other and save a ton of money in the process. Google Flights is now the updated version of ITA Matrix and it works pretty much the same, but there are some differences. So I usually like to look at one and then look at the other and compare them and just make sure I'm getting the best bang for my buck. When you're using these airline search engines, you also want to make sure that you're including airlines in your search process that might not show up in these search engines. One popular one is Southwest. If you're traveling domestically, Southwest doesn't always show up in Expedia or Skyscanner or even the ITA matrix. Sometimes Google Flights does show Southwest prices or says that Southwest might have a cheaper price, but because of the way the software for their company works, it doesn't always show up. So make sure you're looking at more of these budget-friendly airlines websites that might not be showing up in these searches. Once you figure out what the best one is after looking at all of these different search engines, make sure you check the airline's actual website because sometimes you can find an even cheaper rate and you just wanna make sure you're crossing off all of your boxes to find the cheapest flight for you. One last tip with smart search engines is to look into skipping a leg. What this means is even if you are traveling round trip, you book one-way flights each way and those flights might be going somewhere else but they'll stop in the destination that you're trying to get off at on the way. Now you don't want to book a round trip with this method because if you don't get on that next flight that takes you to the final destination, then they're going to cancel the next half of your trip and so then you don't have a flight home. Let me explain this example. Let's say I'm traveling from Chicago to Dallas because I'm going to Dallas soon, but I find that I can actually find a way cheaper flight from Chicago to Denver that stops in Dallas. I can book a one-way ticket to Denver that goes through Dallas and actually get off in Dallas and not board my flight for Dallas to Denver. And then I can book another one-way ticket that goes from Dallas to Chicago or do that again and get off in Chicago if it's going on to another location afterwards. Sometimes this works and saves you a ton of money, so why not try it? There's actually a search engine out there that does some of this work for you and it's called Skip Leg. If you want to check it out, I'll link it down below. All right, tip number three is to check your transportation costs that get you from the airport to your accommodation. I like to consider this as part of the flight cost because it really is the cost that gets you from home to the location that you're trying to visit. And whether you need to take a train or a bus or a taxi from the airport can actually add a lot of money onto the actual ticket reservation. So just make sure you check that and do your research to try to find the cheapest option. Tip number four is to delete the cookies on your web browser. Now this is kind of crazy, but if you are looking at flights and then you decide not to book quite yet and you go back a couple days later and look at flights again, those websites can collect the data from your search history and know that now you're looking at flights again so you're considering buying and they might present you with higher priced flights. I'm not 100% positive if that's exactly how it works but I have deleted the cookies on my web browser before and found cheaper flights so you might as well try it. Number five is to sign up for emails of awesome travel hackers around the world. People like the points guy, Million Mile Secrets, Scott's Cheap Flights, all send daily emails that often include when there's some cheap flights or loopholes in the airline system because sometimes software isn't always perfect and you can find some really cheap flights because it was an accident. But if you get it, you get it. Follow these travel bloggers or travel hackers and they'll let you know when there's super awesome deals going on and then again because you have that flexibility now you can book your vacation for a lot less. Finally, number six is just probably common sense, but don't fly during the holidays. Airlines know it, hotels know it, everyone knows it. They jack up their prices during the holidays because that's when everyone is traveling. So just try to avoid that and again, fly when it's low season for tourism and obviously not a big holiday. Try to fly during the week, avoid the weekends because that's when most people are able to fly and have three days to fly. And if you're booking your flight, try to book about 45 to 60 days out to get some of the cheapest flights and I find that the cheapest flights 
when I am tracking prices happens on Tuesday mornings, Wednesdays, and sometimes even Sundays. So there you have it. Those are all the tips I can pull out of my head and give to you. I hope that it helps you get on your next vacation even faster. If you do want to try getting your flight for even cheaper or almost free, you can try credit card rewards points. I have a free training that I will link below in the description box so you can get in on that game as well if you're ready for it. That's all I have for you today. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up so I know you want more travel videos. It also really supports my channel. Make sure you let me know down in the comment section what travel hacks, tips, or tricks do you have for cheap airline tickets and otherwise. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when I upload more videos on a weekly basis. Go to wanderwealthy.com slash FB to join our private community where we're continuing the discussion. And until I see you in there, I hope you wander wealthy. Thank you.